Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge, 5.37 a.m. Central Standard Time. Here we are, December 12th, 2019. It is a full moon out there. It's still dark, but dawn is on its way. Now, once he first gets here and passes, then it'll get lighter earlier every morning. And then pretty soon when I start, it'll be daylight at, uh, at 5.30. And then, of course, they're going to bring in daylight stinking time in March. That's going to ruin everything. People have trouble sleeping, be tired for work because the government wants to manipulate time. But anyway, I don't want to get into all of that. I hate it. I despise it. And I generally don't like it. All right. But uh, a lot of people like daylight savings time. Dawn Buster says Tinger. All right. So I don't need tags. I have tags, but I don't need them. Because there's no way I'm going to get Clubhouse confused with anything. And I'll explain that in a minute. If you've watched the other videos, you already know. Here's Triple Crown. I don't have too much left. I got enough left for Oh, three taste challenges, probably. It was only $3.99 for this glass, not plastic glass bottle. It's from McCormick Distilling. This is the older label. They have a nice, nicer, newer label, a little fancier label. Only aged two years. Two years? Well, two years is the minimum for straight bourbon. This is a blended bur uh blended American blended whiskey, North American blended whiskey. Now, uh, I'm going to read a little bit on the website. <clears throat> they, now, this stuff's kind of expensive. If you, Good morning, Ronald. How are you? I'm fine, Max Walt. Good morning to you or good afternoon to you in the Russian Federation. Peace. Um, if you buy a full-size bottle of this, a three a 750 milliliter bottle it's about 20 at least 21.99 and i've only seen it on the west bank of the mississippi river it's one of those things but uh i wouldn't pay that much for a blended american whiskey they got some that are more than that over there at walmart right over there they got some from texas these craft blended whiskeys and even blended spirit whiskey of all things rebecca creek and all that for like 24 dollars. it's like why would i pay that you should buy all of Costco brand Kirkland liquors for a series review. Well, I'm not a member of Costco. There is one in New Orleans, but so so no, it's a, it's a no go, I guess. Um, but I could do Trader Joe's. You see, I could do all the Trader Joe's brands, which is probably a similar type thing. Contract distilled. I did their contract distilled a uh, brewed beer. In fact, I might go to Trader Joe's Sunday. We'll have to see. So here's Triple Crown. Now they claim Triple Crown, reading off the website, Triple Crown, you can't do a screen share anymore on this Google Hangouts, Google Live Streaming. Irritating, huh? Yeah, maybe I only have enough for two more taste challenges now, that it, as it turns out. So got one more and then it's done, I guess. $3.99 a bottle, a super discount at Discount Depot. I mean, if I see it again for that, yeah, I'll buy it just to have one because it is worth taste challenging. It has enough credibility. Triple Crown is a true North American whiskey blend. That's right. That features subtle notes of warm vanilla and butterscotch. Yeah, go along with that. Made with the highest quality grain. The highest quality grain. That means there's nothing higher. And matured in charred oak barrels. They didn't say new charred oak, of course. A touch of sweetness and a spicy small grain finish form. Triple Crown's rich and refined flavor profile. Our barrels rest in a well-ventilated warehouse that sits atop a Missouri hillside. Through the changing seasons, the staves of wood expand and contract, which allows more of the charred oak flavor to absorb into the final blend and results in a taste that evolves and delights with each and every sip. You got to go Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, South in Southern Indiana to get the right aging. So you could make bourbon anywhere in America. But the problem with Louisiana would be too hot most of the year. It wouldn't expand and contract per properly with heat and cold. You could make it in Michigan, but it wouldn't get warm enough during the year. See, it's too cold on average. But Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, right, the upper south, 
the mid south, whatever you want to call it, Indiana, the bottom tip of the northern states, literally the bottom tip because it's right by the Ohio River, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They have enough variations in seasons, so that's why it's perfect for that. Plus, you're in the grain belt area, all that farming, and you get real good corn, gov government subsidized corn. <laughs> Let's see. Begins with a fine cast matured bourbon. Crafted at a distillery with a heritage that dates back to 1856. McCormick distilling. There's a diff there's a different name for it. Holiday Holiday Distilling. That's the name of the actual distillery. And it's expertly blended using techniques that have been refined over time. And then they show a picture of the Rick House. You can take a tour there. Exceptionally smooth and rich with character. Triple Crown is the ultimate North American blended whiskey. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry, but actually it's seven, it's Seagram Seven Crown. The way I see it, Seagram Seven Crown whips it. That's the king. That's the ultimate American blended whiskey. But that's my opinion. Other people would disagree. But I think it is. Then they show recipes. Most of these web, good websites will show a bunch of recipes for cocktails and highballs. Then they show whiskey pouring out of a bong hole in the barrel. They have a place where you can contact them. Then they give a disclosure at the bottom. Triple Crown Distilling Company, Western Missouri. It's really McCormick Distilling. Grain neutral spirits, 80%. That's just unaged corn liquor. In other words, grain neutral spirits is moonshine. When you hear about people making moonshine, Late at night in an illegal, at an illegal still. The moonshine is clear because they don't have time to age it in barrels. They gotta make it and distribute it because it's, it's being done on the run. But in the distilling world, it's called grain neutral spirits, corn liquor, clear, unaged. Um. But it's amazing people go to the store and pay $20 for a bottle of moonshine, which is like an unrefined product. It's like a base product. Well, whatever. And you can buy the uncut moonshine, the uh, Everclear and the diesel. They tell you don't drink it. It's not to drink. The man told me that it's Sazerac, the distiller, one of the distiller masters in New Orleans, where they make the uh, some of the... Uh, Sazerac rye whiskey. He said, no, you can't drink that. It'll make you go blind and cause organ failure. But these high school kids will do that as a challenge or something. No, it's poison. It's not made to drink. <laughs> Look at the uh, Everclear website. It'll tell you that. It's a base to make your own bourbon and stuff like that. You know, people do that home distilling, which is not actually legal. But you know what I mean? There's no way they can enforce that. Contains old oak extract. Oak extract, oh. There's a copper pot still they're showing. Yeah, it's not all oak. It's not all, all the aroma you get ain't from oak. It's from oak extract, which comes in like a bottle and you can buy it if you're a distilling company. Ha ha ha. True story, folks, sorry. You say you can't add flavor into a whiskey. Yeah, not bourbon, not straight bourbon, but you can add flavor into blended American whiskey. You could add flavor into um, blended bourbon, which is an actual different category. Now it's showing a new bottle, Triple Crown, and the new Triple Crown bottle has a photo of the distillery on there, wood, slats. Huh. Wouldn't mind getting a hold of one of those just to look at it. Age and chart cast. I'm trying to find out where they talk about. Maybe they took that down since it was so ridiculous. There's some more bottle shots. Triple crown on the rocks. How to make it. Okay. Yeah, I see that they've updated this website because they were talking about or I'm missing it, but they were talking about, we used the most fantastic small grain bar, um, malt 
the best in the world to make this. And I'm thinking the best in the world and it's only $21.99 a bottle seems crazy, you know, but I don't see that on there anymore. They might've watched my video and said, take that down. It's so silly. I would like to think that, you know, tastes kind of like Jameson for real, the Kirkland Irish whiskey. It's probably made by Jameson under contract. You know how these things work. I like Four Roses also. Did you know making homemade brandy can have a big chance of getting you deathly ill if you don't know what you're doing? Of course, you know, brandy, whiskey, these people make stuff at home and then they say, I'm blind. I'm bl I was talking to a guy that's a, a salesman for Anheuser-Busch uh, distributor and he, I don't want to name the distributor because he say he's always nervous. They're going to find out that he's talking to me and, uh, you know, blind. so I can understand that. I guess they kind of, it's kind of a high pressure job and stuff like that. But, um, he was saying, uh, I know some old guys that are blind because of uh, like sipping on the distillate while they were making bourbon. And these old men are like 70 years old and blind. I mean, I, I don't mess with that. You know, I'm not, I don't need to make my own beer or wine or liquor because I can buy it cheap at the store. I'm not really into that. Now, I know people that make their own wine. You know, I've drunk it. <laughs> People around here that make it, Muscatel wine, Moscato, really, what is it? I didn't particularly like it. I didn't think they did a particularly good job. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like full of sugar. It's Now, the people that make their own andouille sausage, that's a different story. That's good. Okay, so now we have Clubhouse. What do we know about Clubhouse? Not much. They give no blend ratio statement on the bottle. I don't know if it's 75, 20, 80, 20. It has to be at least 80, 20. All right. So we know that much. At least 20% of what's in that bottle is straight whiskey. Now, it might not be bourbon because it could have been aged in a used barrel, but whatever the case is straight whiskey. All right. What's the difference between straight whiskey and straight bourbon whiskey? There is no difference except for one thing. Bourbon is in a brand new barrel. Straight whiskey is in a used barrel. You say that might even taste the same. It might. I don't know. You know, but that's the difference. OK. But this thing has color added. You say, how hey, you know that? What makes you an expert? Uh, no. Oh, oh, I'm not an expert. It says it on the bottle. Caramel, caramel color added. So that's not an expert. It's just you find out stuff by researching it. That's all I ever do with these videos. I just find out. I'll do research. And then I don't make claims that I can't back up. I'll say could be that way. It's possible, but I don't state suppositions as facts. Some people do. I watch the videos and they get angry. Usually if you ask them something, some of them are cool, you know, but some of them got very defensive. They're like, well, look it up. I was like, no, you said it. Where's your source material? Got none. Blended whiskey with natural flavor. So there's natural flavors added. Now, the thing is, that confused me so much on this, I couldn't nail down what the flavor was, what the weird flavor was. Um, and I'm not going to get them confused. It's it, This is a not... Let me smell this thing. Uh, so weird. There's no purpose in doing a blind, blind taste test, okay? There's no point to that because you never get them confused, all right? There's no way you can exterminate or eliminate the, the uh, there's no way you, I should say eliminate, that makes more sense. There's no way you can eliminate bias in this video because the aromas are so strange, one from another, divergent, can't confuse them, all right? So let's not worry about that. In this case, blind won't matter. In other ones, it will, but with, with Clubhouse, it won't. All I know about Clubhouse, it comes from Kentucky. It's bottled in Bardstown, Kentucky by Heaven Hill. It is listed on their website under product specifications. And all they tell you is 80 proof and it's available only in one liter glass bottles. That's all they say. Beyond that, you can read the bottle and that's all you're going to know. It has a very strange flavor additive, aroma additive, and I didn't know what it was. At first, it was so off-putting. I said, is it lemon? I just don't know what it was. You know, it's just driving me crazy. 
and I was dropping it to a D. I said, this tastes bad. It's a D. But on the third or fourth, can't remember, sampling of it, I said, oh, I think it's cocktail sherry that they're adding to it. Could be plum wine, because I know they add that to Canadian whiskey. It could be plum wine and cocktail sherry. All right. But it's something like that. <clears throat> and then it could only be up to 2%. If you look at the U.S. government website, only up to 2% of the volume can be those flavorings, flavorings. But apparently they must be very strong flavors because it's shining through the other 98% of the volume. I mean, these blended whiskeys can be only 20% straight whiskey and 80% grain neutral spirits, which means 80% filler, which has no flavor, but you'll taste a strong whiskey taste many times, not all the time, many times. All right. Now, here, the McCormick, the Triple Crown. It's a rich flavor. It's sweet. It's sugary. It's corn candy. You know what I'm saying? Candy corn, corn syrup, caramel. It is so candy-like. I think that's why people like it because it's got that candy flavor. And every time I look around, I see people eating candy, 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 candy. The dentists are happy because it gives them a lot of business. But you know what I'm saying? Candy. Uh, maybe some flower nectar and then oak, oak, but it's from the oak extract. Pour a little bottle in, you know, when they mean add it. Hey, yeah, but I don't write the regulations, so it has a good taste. You get some charred oak because it said a charred barrel. It's like stereotypical. Mid American, you know what I mean? Mid USA continent whiskey. Nothing great, certainly nothing bad. I don't think it's worth $21.99 a bottle. Is it worth $3.99 for the half size bottle? $3.75 milliliter? Yeah, good value. Otherwise, I don't know about that. It's fine, it's fine. It's better than McCormick blended whiskey which would be about $9 a bottle, but not the great, but it's better than many uh, American blended whiskeys. McCormick is, is not as good as some better than many. And you can get it for five. Actually, you can go to a uh, uh, super discount store and they got liter bottles for $5.99. I am not joking. It was last year, $5.99. You say, but look what you're getting, a bottle of old junk. Well, you know, if you're used to drinking Pappy Van Winkle and then you go to McCormick, you would probably say that. And then, but then of course you're only paying $5.99. So it's, uh, we know what that is. If you, you live in New Orleans, you eat at Delmonico every Friday night and then you go to McDonald's and get some uh, chicken nuggets, you're going to say this is the worst thing. It's all about a perspective and a balancing act. Okay, now let's look at this odd thing. Uh, so weird, but I am starting to come around to it. I was so incredibly hostile to it a week ago, and rightfully so. They just say flavors added, don't tell you what they are, and you're supposed to figure it out. Give you no website information, so you're, you're literally going in blind because you don't know what you're dealing with, except from a few basic facts. Well, maybe I will buy that brandy, but I think it's so cheap, $6.99 for a liter. But who's going to watch it? You know, I can make a video. Oh, a clubhouse brandy. And people be like, I ain't watching that. And I can understand. I wouldn't be offended. But if I get the Corbell brandy, which has been around since the 1850s, might have something there. People might watch Corbell Brandy. That's a famous one. I can get that at door next for um, uh, $12.99 or something like that. $14.99. Good morning from California. California. Profit on the golden shore. <laughs> like an angel. 
fire wheel burning in the air. All right, Daryl Matias. Hello, Daryl. Okay. You will not be able. All right. Um, so that's fine. Now, I think they might use plum wine, plum wine and or or both. You know what I'm saying? Plum wine and or cocktail sherry. Go buy some Sheffield. Uh, you might have an easier time finding Fairbanks cocktail sherry. Fairbanks cocktail sherry. You can get a big old one and a half liter bottle. One and a half. 1.5 liter bottle. For $10.99. Fairbanks cocktail sherry. You might find it strange. It's not really designed to drink straight. Neat. You mix it. But it's strange. And boy, the garbage people came early this morning, ain't eh? They're rolling. But if you drink that Fairbanks from Ian J. Gallo, you might say, oh, now I see. My mind is working. And compared to this, now I got an envy for Fairbanks cocktail sherry. John and Ely, we could do a we could do a, a examination because he was talking about wanting to get more Fairbanks. And then they got the dry sherry. That's a different item, boy. Oh, but you can't drink too much of those. 18% alcohol. You'll be floored. You'll be knocked out. 36 proof. And people might pour a big old glass. I see James P. Madonna putting his big old glasses and he's drinking that Taylor Port or Madeira is 18% alcohol. Then he was saying, "When I think this is affecting me, I'm like, you, you think, huh? <laughs> it's really made to drink out of a little sherry glass, like about that big. <laughs> In New York State, if you go to New York City, you can't even buy sherry at a wine shop. You got to go to a liquor store because they're very regulated there. It's considered a spirit, not a wine, <laughs> but it is a wine that's." Spiked with spirits, brandy usually. Yeah, interesting thing. If you ever want to try dessert wine, wine made with brand spiked with brand. Thomas Jefferson used to drink Madeira wine all the time. Well, I bet he would. He'd be writing some documents, right? Hey, Madeira, fellow Virginians, let's write a treatise. <laughs> I drank so much Madeira. I want to buy Louisiana. <laughs> Might have been what he said. Um, from Napoleon, the Consul of France, first consul. Um, that's very fake oak taste now. But see, I wouldn't be saying that if I didn't know it had oak extract. But now you can taste that liquid oak <laughs> candy taste, almost like brown sugar in it. Oh man, that's interesting. Clubhouse. <laughs> it's weird how I hated it so much. I was so virulent, virulently hostile towards it. And now I'm coming around to it. Now, would it be something I'd buy again? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I have certain standards. But I would not hate, at this point, going through the taste challenges with it. I do taste some wood now. Could it be oak extract? Could be. But it's aged at least four years in small wood. Hmm. You put anything in wood for four years, it's going to pick up some woody character, I think. So, is it worth $6.99 for an entire big liter bottle? Uh, yeah, now I think it is. First, I was saying, yeah, just so you could experience the bizarre nature of it. But I guess, in a way, in a way, it has some, some credibility <laughs> on its own merits, not just for the novelty of it. 
Now, who, who's the winner here? Well, I think I'd rather drink Triple Crown, Belmont, Preakness, and Kentucky Derby. I think I'd rather drink Triple Crown because it tastes more like what you would expect from whiskey. This, this I think, is even skirting or pushing the envelope on the blended whiskey guidelines, uh, actually regulations, which is actually a law. If you read the tax and tr Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau website, ttnb.gov, it said blended whiskey, and I already told you about the requirements, must have the flavor and aroma, the aroma and flavor generally associated with whiskey. I don't think anybody would dr smell this and taste it and think this had a flavor associated with whiskey maybe pecan shells or maybe even walnut shells. I'm thinking walnut shells. So could they be using crushed up pecan shells and just soaking it in the barrel with the whiskey? Because I bet they could buy that cheap, like from a pecan shelling company and just rest them in the barrels for four years. Yeah, they could be using that now that I think of it and the plum wine and the cocktail sherry. But that's not what people think of when they think of whiskey. So this sort of like violates the, the guidelines. It's almost more like a liqueur, but it ain't a liqueur because 40 proof, I mean, haha, 80 proof and up. But it's, it's, it's on the edge of not complying with the guidelines, I think. And the taste is the same way. Now, is there a U.S. government regulator sitting there at a desk tasting it and writing notes and saying, uh, I am going to appeal this to the regional office that it does not comply with what is generally associated with whiskey, the aroma and flavor of whiskey. I seriously doubt anybody from the U.S. government ever even tasted it. But I don't know how that works. You know what I'm saying? I've read that they couldn't even one time they couldn't do any distilling one day because there were no U.S. government represent, representatives on the site to supervise it. You know, like they'll say distilled under the supervision of the U.S. government. I just thought that was some certification they put on there. And every once in a while, they drop in and check it out, make sure everything's on up and up. But I was just reading that the other day on the news, you know, Internet, they were saying, um, they lost a day of production because there was no government rec, uh, representative on site while they were producing. I thought that was interesting. And I know a guy that, whose brother works at a meat packing plant in Louisiana where they cut meat and pack it. He said, uh, if the USDA guy is not there, they can't cut the meat. I said, what are you talking about, Shane? He said, no, there's a man, you know, they wear a white coat, got an insignia, United States government, Department of Agriculture. And he said, the guys, they're watching everything. It's like literally under the supervision of the U.S. government. I said, well, that sounds like a deadhead job. He said, well, I'm just telling you. If they ain't, oh, maybe it's his son that works there. Or well, whoever, a relative. He said, if they're not there, they can't cut the meat. I said, golly. Huh. I can't really back those stories up. But it seemed plausible. Hmm. Now, is there corruption in those regulatory agencies? This I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, are they getting comped? You know what I'm saying? Are they supervising and not seeing any funny business because they're getting comped and they don't ever pay for whiskey? That'd be a risky thing because if they ever got checked out by their superiors, they could lose their job. And who wants to risk a cushy? I mean, I worked for the government for over 20 years. I mean, these people complain but they're just bull. It's bull. You know, it's bull. They get all the benefits. Believe me, it's on your money. It's your tax money. I'm a, I'm an advocate for the taxpayer. These government employees, like the ones I worked with, they're in these unions. They're real Marxist, hostile. They'll claim that they're starving. You know, they're all driving brand new Ford F-150s and GMC Silverados with, you know, the plush package. Ain't buying a discounted kind of version. And they are uh, talking about but when I get back from Disney World, my Disney World cruise, we going on strike. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're really suffering, you know. But um, they're paying like $14 a month for health insurance. 
a single person. They uh, they get in fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, and they work on one hundred eighty-two days a year, and they get off at two o'clock in the afternoon. They might have to stay for a meeting once a month. Believe me, <laughs> I don't think anybody would uh, risk risk their job to get comped as a supervisor of liquor and meat, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're getting juiced in. I don't know. And they don't see anything wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, I taught public school. I've taught in public school for over 20 years. What's a government job? I was a government employee. Do you see corruption there? Yes. Yeah, used to see all kind of corruption. It was bad, you know? And I, I retired because I, I said, it's like working in a prison. I don't like their prison approach. I, I, I made a video about that. I said, I prefer a liberal arts approach to education, liberal arts. It's not, prison you know um really trains kids for the future right prison mentality but um you know you see that but the retirement you know these guys are not going to risk their job for they get every 20 years they can start working at 21 let's say 20 let's say 22 i, I started working early because i graduated from college early i was only 21 when i graduated I did accelerated uh, school, but so let's say they're 22 and they work for 20 years and they're 42. They can retire and get a check every month for the rest of their life. That is no joke. And they still get the insurance. Like here, if you work in the same parish, which you will call a county, we say parish for the same parish for 20 years, the parish pays for all your insurance. All you do is pay what you paid your, you know, when you were an employee, which in my case, $14 a month. So don't let these government employee people fool you. All right. Your tax money. But this video is not about that. I'm just making a point. You see, don't get fooled. Don't get tricked. They didn't like me saying all that. You know, when we would be at meetings, they were like, hey, how about this? Get lost. You know, I was like, no, I'm going to I'm going to scream out. The emperor has no clothes, you know, because I used to say, why are we eating all this catered food at a at a teacher's meeting? Why can't people bring their own donuts? And no, I didn't see too many skinny teachers, if you dig what I'm saying. Good morning, Jack. I mean, every meeting, donuts, coffee, juice, milk. If it was a meeting in the afternoon, chicken fingers, all kind of dip, fresh fruit on these beautiful trays. I'm like, where does this money come from? And they say, oh, we don't pay for that. It comes from Title IX. Oh, Title I. Sorry, Title I. So well, isn't that a federal government reading program where to help kids with literacy? How does us getting catered food line up with kids getting taught literacy? I don't understand all this. Well, naturally, I would eat it. We had a meeting. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat it. But I, I said, this is like a corruption. And I tell people at work, I say, hey, your tax money is paying for that. You need to need to check your sympathy, your sympathy level before you go crying for these people. And you wonder why they all heavy set because they're eating. And I mean, damn good catered meals every week. It's a joke. It's a it's a tragedy. Now, I was saying that this uh, clubhouse is a joke. Well, a clubhouse is not a joke. It confused me. OK, because I think they're adding sherry, cocktail sherry and the plum wine. The joke is when you pay taxes, high, high taxes in America, over half your salary every year. This is a true story. Over half your salary every year goes to taxes. And I ain't even talking about sales. Well, OK, sales tax, property tax, which is the most insidious tax of all property tax. That's like pure evil. All these taxes, like half the money you make, over half the money you make is absorbed by taxes. And I'm not even talking about regulatory taxes where regulations make car prices go up. So you're paying a tax in a practical sense. And then you're paying all these taxes. You're working your, your behind off every week. I don't care if you work as a cashier at a grocery store or you're a engineer at, uh, you know, a Cargill and you design grain elevators. I don't care. Your money should not be going to buy people catered meals. And that's what's happening. And that is not the whiskey talking. That is just what I say all the time, whether I'm drinking coffee or liquor. 
All right. Well, anyway, we're in this taste challenge, and we use that term loosely today because it was no kind of challenge. It's a tie, really. It's a tie. Although I do personally prefer the McCormick because it has more of an authentic whisk, more of an authentic whiskey taste. Um, but I, I'm gonna end this by saying free enterprise today, free enterprise tomorrow, and free enterprise forever. And I'll get you in trouble saying that because a lot of people, whether they're blue state or red state, if you catch my drift, they don't, they're not too open to free enterprise. I worked 30 years in Michigan Department of Corrections. I hear what you're saying, says Jack. So see, he was probably observant of these corruptions. These monstrous corruptions. All right, thanks for watching this video production and with commentary add-on. <laughs> oh, me. And uh, I think tomorrow night for uh, Fandango Friday, we'll be looking at a very interesting rum taste challenge. Yes. Ron Pontalba White versus um, Aristocrat from um, Grosskuth Distilling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Now, I don't know what everybody else is going to bring. James P. Madonna said he got an exotic exotic liquor to bring that nobody's ever seen on his in his possession. So I'm curious to see that, you see. All right. Thanks for watching this video production.